Hey you guys, I ran across a devotional that I thought was so good that I had to share it. I am reading from my phone on the YouVersion Bible uh, app, and it's a plan that I've chosen of the fruit of the Spirit, and it's on day two, and of course I'm behind, but that's okay. The devotional begins with a quote by Christine Kane. I'm not sure who she is, but I thought it was a very good quote. Listen to this and see if you agree with it. If the light that is on you is brighter than the light that is in you, the light that is on you will destroy you. The nine-part fruit listed in Galatians 5 should not be confused with spiritual gifts that are mentioned in the Bible. Gifts such as leadership, wisdom, pastoring, encouragement, knowledge, and prophecy are given by the Spirit for the purpose of building up believers. I think another one of those is hospitality. The fruit, however, is produced by the Spirit and is developed and displayed in us when we yield ourselves to God's Spirit. So gifts are different than the fruit of the Spirit. We are if we want to know how we're growing as Christ followers, we should not focus on how gifted we are or how well we use our gifts. No, it is the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives that shows our spiritual mat maturity. Not that our gifts aren't valuable or vital. They are. It's just that we can operate in our own gifts while we are gratifying our flesh because we are beyond us, because they are beyond us, because our gifts are beyond us. Ouch, <laughs> right? That's so convicting. Exhibiting the, spirit, the, the fruit of the Spirit is a manifestation of a transformed life by the power of God. Okay, this is the hard part. It is not uncommon to see a man and a woman operate in their spiritual gifts because they then but then immediately act in a sinful way. <laughs> Why? Because God will use whomever he wants, whenever he wants, and however he wants. Maybe you've seen someone preach the most powerful sermon at a church or conference only to see them spew hatred to others at a later time. Perhaps a person may give generously of their time to impact those less fortunate, but then turn around and be incredibly impatient and rude with their own children. <laughs> the converse is also true, though. There are people all over the world who are continually exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit in their daily lives. They may be serving behind the scenes, visiting someone in the hospital, or offering their time by just being with a friend in need. Their contribution to build up believers may not be flashy, but their character is deep because they have chosen to deny their flesh and walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Ouch, I think there is something in that for me for sure. <laughs> the gifts receive far more attention and accolades than the quiet, almost hidden fruit of the Spirit. Yet it, it really doesn't take tremendous effort to operate in our own gifts. The fruit, on the other hand, involves the difficult task of denying to self every day. The fruit may not be shouting for attention, but rest assured, we always know when the fruit is present in our lives and when it is not present. So in the reflection part of the devotional, it says, do you feel that it's easier for you to walk or to live out your spiritual gifts than the fruit of the Spirit? Do you feel like it's easier to, to live out your spiritual gifts? than it is to walk in the Spirit. I think for sure. I think the the gift of the spiritual gifts that the Lord has bestowed on all of us in our own way tend to come naturally. Um it's it's surprising to me that we can 
share our gifts and glorify God in our gifts, in our, in our spiritual gift, while completely neglecting the fleshy um, the fleshy part of us that clings to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's a hard one to swallow, isn't it? Okay, just because a devotional is not complete without um, scripture, I'm going to make sure that we read Galatians 5. Um, this chapter's little title is called Walk by the Spirit. It was for freedom that Christ set us free, starting with uh, verse 1. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is under obligation to keep the whole law. If you have been severed from Christ, you are seeking to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion did not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will adopt no other view, but the one who is disturbing you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. But I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Then the stumbling block of the cross has been abolished. I wish that those who are troubling you would even mutilate themselves. <laughs> That's some strong language, Paul. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Wow, what a message for today. And we haven't even gotten to the part that relates to the devotional. <laughs> For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you, de if you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire on the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, impurity, uh, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Daniel, say hi. hi. <laughs> Disputes dissensions, factions, envyings, drunkenness, carousings, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such these there is no law. Now those who are those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. That is Galatians 5. And I think that's the chapter that our Harmony Hill... Um, youth camp this past year, that was the, the focus. Galatians 5, wasn't it? Very good stuff. You have been called to freedom. I thought that was good. I hope that that um, helps somebody. I think it helps me. So have a good day. Stay safe, guys.